So here is the finished article. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's been quite a mission getting everything all mounted in there, but um, it all worked out. I mean, you can see here the uh, the original um, knobs here that uh, came on the front. They just pull off, and uh, luckily there's a little tab in there, and that aligns with the flat part. So these just kind of push on. And they were luckily the new the new switches that I got were exactly the same sort of diameter. So um, yeah, these old knobs just kind of go on just fine, and obviously match up with the rest of the case. Um, where I cut around the uh, the hole for the screen there, it's not the neatest thing in the world, but I can get a little uh, bezel to go around there, and that'll that'll be kind of like a, a last bit of polishing for this. Um, if I turn it round, then um, you can see here I've got the back on and if I just quickly whip out the screws for these and the other side then what you can see is that I have, basically I've got a sheet of MDF set at the back with a couple of holes that I drilled through to put the speakers through. And then I used some standoffs, so I got myself a, uh, a little pack of different lengths of standoffs, um, you know, accompanying screws and bolts. And um, as you can see here on the, um, on the main board, I was then just drilled into the MDF and screwed those straight in there. Um, the Pi I was hoping originally to have down on the uh, side beside the main board but as you can see there was just not enough room for that so I had to mount that vertically and that also put paid to my eye hope of having the uh, the pointer spin on the front. Um, here's the motor I got um, as you can see it's uh, it's actually quite a quite a sizable thing it's quite a quite a chunky beast so um, there was just simply not enough room in the case to have that in place as well which is a bit of a shame. Um, as you can see, the uh, the base is bolted in place, so I've got four um, four bolts holding that in, um, and a couple of little brackets at the back there that uh, connect the the face front front piece of MDF to the uh, to the base. I've got a couple of um, pillars either side that the back screws into. Had a bit of an accident with the one over here where I didn't screw a pilot hole wide enough, and so the um, the wood just split. So I've had to prepare myself a new block and I'll worry about putting that in place later. Um, the last thing I did was, um, you can just see there the uh, the power supply going into the, um, it's actually going into the Hi-Fi Berry uh, hat that sits on top of the uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, because uh, the amplifier needs a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi can give it, you basically you feed the power into the Hi-Fi Berry, and then that in turn passes whatever power the Pi needs uh, down into it. Um, but that does mean that I've been able to sort of take that lead and just solder it into a simple power switch. Um, obviously, the Raspberry Pi doesn't come with a power switch normally, so... Um, I was able to put that in. What you're seeing here is basically just an extension lead for a power cable such as this. And I just took the uh, the negative uh, cable and split that. And so that then goes across the switch to uh, to cut the power. The other end, I've just got into a little um, adapter here, which is the uh, just a female barrel plug. Um, you can just get these really easily in Maplin or wherever, and um, they just kind of sort of bolt into place. Um, or screw into place, I should say, secured with a nut, just like that. So um, let me uh, let me just get the back back on, and um, and then we can see the thing fire up. Okay, so now I've got the back back on. I've got my power supply plugged into the back. So if I flip the whole unit around now, just get it straight there. The cable's caught on the bottom, and I flip the switch on the side then the thing starts booting up. Now with this being a Raspberry Pi and a nice or class 10 SD card in there, uh, it doesn't take too long to boot. So um, 
in a few seconds you'll see the display change there it goes it's got on the network and then it will start playing so there you go and just like before there's volume control and there's the tuning button sets win over venus williams very competitive various first set. uh Seven menu options took that and then in the second come set, in venus here williams just seemed to fade away six love then in the second set and including so there is news feeds and various other nice things here at the championships and you can similarly you can mute the sound with the uh by pressing the right button and bringing that back again if you click again oh unfortunately i've just found a little hitch there Oh, hello, David. So oh, it's, it's a strange kind of feeling. what's going on is that the uh, the original buttons for. here are a little but bit too deep final, and so they're just kind of sort of pushing further and further in and that's preventing me from being able to um, click um, click the button properly. So all I'll need to do is sand those down a bit and um, and then that should give them uh, a bit more play and a bit more room to uh, to be able to sort of push in the button cleanly. But that's the whole thing. The Raspberry Pi uh, radio is done.